for I am holy. Be holy, for I am holy. What does this mean? Peter, the book of the author, the author of the book of Peter is drawing this quote uh, from previous scriptures. And in the book of Leviticus, especially, this is found throughout. And coupled with that, be ye holy, for I am holy. It says, sanctify yourselves, therefore. Be ye holy, for I am holy. I am the Lord that sanctifies you. Now, the author of the book of Peter is translating this advice into be holy, for I am holy. In all manner of conversation, be ye holy. It is the conversation that the author of the book of Peter is picking up when it comes to this advice from the former books. And that's true, absolutely. It is the conversation and the conversation's thoughts and feelings, the devotional conversation's conscience that is to be holy. But what does that mean, right? What does that mean? We know what it means in a derogatory way. We, we, we like to say things in a derogatory way about others of them being quote unquote holy. Or we like to fantasize due to the mythological or the traditional theoretical religious aspect that we have of the Bible, of what this term holy means and what it denotes. So what does it mean according to the Bible? We're not talking about our opinion. We're not talking about anything outside or within us that is not grounded in what the Bible teaches. What does holy mean? What, what does quote unquote holy mean to the Bible and in what context? Psalm 99, 2 and 3. Psalm 99, 2 and 3. The Lord is great in Zion and he is high above all the people. Let them praise thy great and terrible name for it is holy. Now to the Bible's mind. Holy is a term applied to the sanctuary. Holy is a term applied to the congregation, but in the context of which this term is applied and of which the author of the book of Peter is applying it to which it is applied throughout as a, the scriptures as a foundational base, it is applied actually to name. Name is actually what is to be holy. And when it comes to name, when we think on the regard, and I've gone through this term of what name means plenty of times, and I'm not going to spend the time on that right now. Name meaning form of devotional character. Name is synonymous with character. It is the name of the living God that is supposed to be or that is holy. It is the name. Psalm 103, 1. Psalm 103, 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Again, this isn't talking about a name as in a government name, as in my name, or as in your name. This isn't a name talking about Jehovah or Yahweh or Yeshua. That's not the context of what the authors here are writing about. Name is not literal designated name. Name is a term equated to what the devotional conversation carries in character. Name is a term for what the, the mindset of the devotional conversation is. When holy, it is the name that is seen, that is approved, that is receiving, and that is giving thanksgiving, and that is honored. It is name. Psalm 106.47 Psalm 106, 47, save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us from among the heathen to give thanks unto thy holy name in triumph and thy praise. Just want to bring out this point here, that when it comes to name, in every context, despite the book, name is what is to be regarded as holy. It is name, the name that is to be seen or regarded as holy. Now, in the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 7, 1, 
Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 1, that very first line, it reads, A good name is better than precious ointment. A good name is better than precious ointment. And the illustration there is connecting name to what is anointing. To connecting name to what is anointing or to what should be anointing. One's name is what anoints one's character. One's name is that oil of anointing. So when it's saying, be holy for I am holy, and then the author of the book of Peter is understanding that to mean be holy in all manner of conversation. Well, that's because what is to be holy, which is the name of the conversation, that is what is to anoint, not just us, but every other mind encountering our conversation. When one is holy, when one is holy, one's name is consistently anointing them. And when we get to a certain level or a certain stage in our faith's growth and development, it then begins to anoint others. Again, holy, to be holy, means to have a name that is beyond decent and that is fit for anointing. Looking at Proverbs 8, 8 and 9. Actually, Psalm 145, 17, sorry. Psalm 145, 17, one last point here is that the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. So when it comes to, again, that, that aspect of holiness, it is connected to works. It is connected to ways. Now, Proverbs 8, 8 and 9. Proverbs 8, verses 8 and 9. What are the ways of the living God? What is the work of the living God? What are the ways? What are the works of the living God? Proverbs 8, 8 and 9. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that findeth knowledge. Now, Psalm 145.17 said that all the ways of the Lord, all the ways of the living God are righteous. Proverbs 8, 8 and 9, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. Psalm 145.17, righteous are all his ways, holy are all his works. The Bible's teaching here that we can shift and interchange ways and works holy and righteous. These mean the same things. The words of my mouth are in righteousness and plain to all that have understanding. Psalm 111, 7, what are the works of the living God? The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. the ways and the works. His ways are in righteousness or those works are holy. These mean the same thing. Those works are works that are in judgment and verity. Now, verity, 1 Timothy 2, 7, you get a bit of an idea of what this word verity means. 1 Timothy 2, verse 7, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. When you look up the definition of verity, it really means factual. It really means in truth. So those ways are ways of understanding. Those works, they are works of the demonstration of judgment and of truth. And this word judgment in context doesn't mean judgment as in consequential or as in consequence. This word judgment actually means commandment, actually means law, actually means doctrine, actually means philosophy. So those ways are righteous and those works are holy. All of those falling back to the words that are coming up out of the mouth. Words that are words of truth and for judgment. Our world today is a world of communication. 
whether it's an important email or a social media post, we all want to make sure our writing is clear, effective, and professional. But if we're going to be honest, we can say that we don't、um, always give time or have time even to proofread everything that we write. And this is where Grammarly comes in. With Grammarly, you can easily eliminate、uh, grammar errors, spelling errors, and punctuation errors to make your writing clear and beyond concise. So, tap into this source.、Uh, head on over to my website. This is a sponsor of mine. Click the affiliate link and explore、uh, the brilliance of this this source. The good thing about breaking down the Bible and especially about having a record of it is that the definitions are there. For review consistently, review internally. I mean, having those definitions, as I have broken them down, not really needing to go back, but to speak freely. When it comes to the conversation, the conversation is to be holy, as the Bible writes of the conversation of the main mind within it, as being holy. Well, we have to take accountability and also the responsibility for doing the same. From the previous episode,、uh, getting into the Exodus that is、uh, decreed, getting into the culture of what that means for the conversation, seeing that it is the conversation that is to go through an Exodus, a period of liberation, for the purpose of being holy. Well, what does that mean? We know what that means according to our opinion, according to traditional thought. But the Bible doesn't really talk about holiness ascribed to a deity. Bible doesn't do deity holiness or deity worship in a sense. Bible deals with name admiration, name admiration, and the name to be to be admired. It is not Jehovah, Yeshua, Yahweh, whatever you would call it, Jesus.、Uh, that's not how the Bible operates. The Bible has a surface level of understanding for a surface experience. The Bible has a penetrating experience for the penetrating conversation. And in every aspect, in the reality that the mind within the Bible has constructed, name is what is to be honored. Name is what is to be praised. The name of the main mind within the Scriptures is to be honored and regarded. In the same sense, seeing this. We ought to know that the name of our conversation ought to become the most important thing to our experience. Connected to that name are ways and works. Now, the ways and works have to follow the mind that is within here, not the mind that we assume, not the mind that we see out there, wherever we are in an out there place. If we are students of the mind within the scriptures, let's just do that. Let's just be that. Let the experience fall. Let those chips be where they may be. The experience will be guided by the mind, inspiring these words. That's 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 the point. So the 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 idea of holiness, the idea of what is holy, has everything to do with the main character or the main mind within at the core of these scriptures, and it is a name. It is a name. Name again, meaning the character of the devotional conversation. Name is the character, the intellect, the morale, the morality, whatever you want to say, as equating to a virtue, leading back, or and also leading forward, the conversation to the source of the converse of. To the conscience, the source of the conscience within the Bible's devotional conversation, underlying. So, jumping to Psalm seventy-eight two through four again, just one more on these works here. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He hath done. The way that the Bible teaches, what we have here in this last line is a line of definitions that are synonymous with one another. Whether it is the wonderful works, or whether it is called His strength, or whether it is called 
showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord, they all mean the same thing. The works of the living God are the praises of the living God. And the works and the praises of the living God, this is the strength of the living God. What is strength? Ecclesiastes 7, 19, wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than 10 mighty men which are in the city. That, that's an easy verse. Wisdom translates to strength. Strength translates to wisdom. The, the underlying thought of what the works and the ways of the living God are, they are wisdom. Jumping into the Bible once again, Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8, 14 and 15. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 14 and 15. It reads, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength by me kings reign and princes decree justice. Again, further connections to this term wisdom. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Remember, that Psalm 78 equated strength, one, to the praises, and two, to the works of the same individual. These three mean the same thing. The praises, the works, the strength, it is all the same thing. Strength now we're seeing equals to wisdom. Wisdom we're now seeing equals to counsel and understanding, according to the author that wrote the book of Proverbs. So when it comes to, again, this idea of being holy, and then the idea of being holy, having commendation to name, or by name, or from name, or through name, and name simply being outlet for the ways and the works of how the living God operates, or for how the mind within the Bible operates, we can see that this mind is operating through counsel, through wisdom, through understanding. That operation being a sign or a witness of praise, of works, or of strength, and strength being wisdom or counsel or understanding. This is the might of the name throughout the scriptures. This is how the Bible thinks. This is how the Bible operates. So when it comes to being holy in conversation as the counsel is, the exodus that our conversation is to go through is to lead to a terrain or to a land of understanding or to an experience where the human being isn't accounted to be holy, but the body of belief. And that through the cultivation, growth, and the development of that name linked to that individual body of belief. It is the body of our belief that is to develop its name, its individual name. That's why this, this, this illustration of the Exodus is necessary. It is the name that is to be developed, and that name is to be developed in a specific location. And once that name is developed, well, then we have a conversation that is holy, an unholy conversation we can now assume and quite fairly conclude that an unholy conversation is a conversation that does not have a name or that has a name that is nominal. That does not have a name or that has a name that is consistently nominal. This is an unholy conversation or this is what unholiness or holiness being attributed to the conversation should be looked at as. Now let's get some advice. Turning to the book of James. James 3.13. James 3.13. James 3 and verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Now everything that I just said is... is in this, this one verse, it's crazy. Everything that I just said, minutes saying everything and going through the Bible to see how these verses connect, they are in this one verse. Whoso is a wise man and endued with knowledge, 
let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. I ended the last episode by saying this and will again say it. The core of the Bible's philosophy is the growth and the development of the conversation's conscience, not holiness of the human being, not holiness of the soul for some life after, not holiness to the, for the, to the soul for some life before. The Bible deals with now and consistently it is the conversations, thoughts, and feelings that are its main concern. Whether a pastor or a church leader or a ministry volunteer, or whether the work is going on within and that it's personal, your soul temple being cared for, Church Source is your online source for everything that you need to make your journey and your ministry prosperous. Head on over to my website to click the affiliate links. They will take you to Church Source where you will be able to see and to discover the resources that will help you make your journey and your ministry thrive. So we have seen and gone through the Bible to see holy its definition according to the Bible. Holy not being attributed to the human being. Holy not being attributed by any deed or act one can do through or by the body. Holy for the conversation only. The conversation, the body of belief, if you want to think about it in that way, not the physical body, the body of belief is what is to be holy. And what is actually to be holy by the body of belief, it is to be holy through the name that it is cultivating in a specific location. Episodes prior, I have spoken about what this location is. I've, I've saved these quotes for now. This is coming from Philo because this breaks down perfectly the illustration of what all of this means. Now, this is Philo, the works of Philo on Dreams, book one. Philo, the works of Philo on Dreams, book one. There are others, again, the purest and most excellent of all, which have received greater and more divine intellects, never by any chance desiring any earthly thing, whatever, but being as it were lieutenants of the ruler of the universe, as though they were the eyes and ears of the great king, beholding and listening to everything. Now, philosophers in general are wont to call these demons, but the sacred scripture calls them angels, using a name more in accordance with nature. For indeed, they do report the injunctions of the father to his children and the necessities of the children to the father. And it is in reference to this employment of theirs that the Holy Scripture has represented them as ascending and descending. Now, this is perfect, perfect illustration because what is ascending and what is descending, these are not literal angels. These are actually minds. Mind is ascending. Mind is descending. Mind is ascending to the temple above. Mind is descending to the earth below, which in episodes prior, um, I've broken down from the Bible, uh, what is above, that temple above, the heavenly sanctuary, figuratively representing the wisdom and the experience therein, outside of the earth, earth being a figurative representation or, a, or, or denoting the religious world. So there are minds, specific minds, finding as if they are students of the ruler of the universe. A vocation to transcend the religious world and to take their minds upward into the wisdom, into the experience therein, which upward wisdom and experience is found at the core of the scriptures. The descending and the ascending, these are minds and more specifically, these are the minds within conversations. The holy conversation is conceived in the temple or from the temple above. The unholy conversation rem remains within the structure of earth, within the core of the religious world, the theory, the baptisms, the rites, the thoughts, the so on and so forth as you want to have it. The just or the holy conversation leaves this behind takes the steps to climb that ladder upward for an experience at the core of the scriptures. Again, Philo, the works of Philo, book two, same book on dreams. Philo, the works of Philo on dreams, book one. And perhaps this is no incorrect statement. 
for the wise have obtained the heavenly and celestial country as their habitation, having learned to be continually mounting upwards. But the wicked have received as their share the dark recesses of hell, having from the beginning to the end of their existence practiced dying, and having been from their infancy to their old age familiarized with destruction. But the practicers of virtue, for they are on the boundary between two extremities, are frequently going upwards and downwards as if on a ladder, being either drawn upwards by a more powerful fate, or else being dragged down by that which is worse, until the umpire of this contention and conflict, namely God, adjudges the victory to the more excellent class and utterly destroys the other. Now, this destruction isn't literal. This class isn't literal. These are classes of mind. This is destruction of conversation. When we go through what we go through, we have to be able to separate our human being from the being of our conversation. Our conversation is to receive an education apart from where it formerly came from, yet growing from its past experience. The temple above is the place of our experiencing newness of mind, newness of devotional culture. It is the conversation that is supposed to be holy in all manner of understanding, behavior, action. It is our conversation. And I wanted to just put that into perspective because when we get to this topic of holy, things can be said because of where we come from in our minds. But to the Bible's mind, the conversation is to be holy and specifically its name, the name, the devotional character, individual devotional character ascribed to the conversation is to mesh with the mind that is within the scriptures for an experience that for an experience that is just and that is for the well-being of not just the devotional conversation, but also of the human being.